Welcome to the Under Construction Podcast with me, Martin Williams. Here we talk about how to build or rebuild your life one step at a time. Let's get to work. And welcome to the Under Construction Podcast. My name is Martin Williams. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You may do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. All the links to the podcast can be found at guidedexpressions.com forward slash podcast with an S. Today, we are continuing our journey through the science of getting rich. We're winding down and we are getting to the chapter called Getting Into the Right Business. And this is one that I am especially excited about getting into. I think it's going to be very helpful for all that are listening. Hopefully, you get something out of it. So, If you know about the science of getting rich or you've been following this particular series, you know that we've been talking about doing things in a certain way. We've been talking about thinking into in the certain way. Excuse me. Um, We understand by reading this book, by listening to this series, that there is a certain way to think. And when you whatever thoughts you have, right, when you think you're creating your life, you're creating your experience by your thoughts. Your life is basically being molded by the way that you think. And so many people live and die and never ever learn what I'm telling you right now. And if you are learning this now, it is one of the most important discoveries that you'll ever make in life. You really do become what you think about and your life becomes what you think about most of the time. So it's important that you learn how to think in a certain way. It's also important that you learn how to act in a certain way. And by acting in a certain way, what we're talking about is not doing things off the cuff. It's not doing things and just going through the motions, but doing things with a purpose, doing things from the heart, doing uh, whatever it is, whatever work you decide to do, doing it in such a way that you marshal all the power, all the resources that are within you. Everything, all all of the the spirit uh, power that's within you, you are putting it to work for whatever purpose you are going after. When you begin to live that way, you're going to start seeing rewards that you've never seen before. And you're going to see them on a more consistent basis than you've ever seen them before. Everyone can get lucky sometimes, but this is about living richly. This is about living a life of abundance, living a life that, you know, the life that you dream of, the life that you've always wanted. I've never met a person who said that they wanted less money. (laughs) I've never met that person. All right. Every person that I've ever known would like to have more money than what they have right now. And it's not always just to spend upon themselves. A lot of times it's to do more good in the world because the more money you have, the more good that you can do. So now that I've done that kind of short recap, let's get into today's uh, topic. So we want to talk about getting into the right business. And what that means is doing the thing that you were best suited to do. Have you ever met someone or come across someone who's doing something and you can see it's, it's as plain as day that they have a talent that has nothing to do with what they're doing right now. And, you know, you look at them and they're saying, wow, you know, why why are you doing this? Why are you here? Now, they may be doing that thing so they can pay the bills, which is fine. You know, there's certainly, um, you know, space for that. But a a lot of times people look at what they're doing for a job now as, as a permanent stop instead of a temporary stop, right? You know, when you're on a train, you know, that train often will stop in many different places, but it's just a stop. Like, I'm not getting off that train until I get to my final destination. That's kind of how you have to look at life. Um, You know, even the job that I have now, I'm grateful for the job. I'm grateful to be able to um, provide for my family and, and grateful that, you know, we have you know, means to eat and means to live comfortably. Um, But this this is not my final destination. My final destination is so much bigger than where I am now. So, you know, I am doing my best 
at my job right now, but I fully understand that there's more for me to do. And so you you know you meet someone who has a greater talent than what they have you know what they're using right now, and you know you kind of wonder like what is their plan like what is their game plan? You may be working at McDonald's, but you have a singing ability. You you may be working at Walmart, but you have an ability to um, to entertain people. You have an ability to build cars or build computers. Uh, whatever that case may be. So, so no matter where you are now, the first thing you want to do is you want to discover your talent. You want to discover the thing that you do better than anyone else that you know within your circle or, or even within your extended circle, right? If no one can develop websites like you can, that's a talent, okay? Um, if no one can sing like you can, that's a talent. Um, if, if no one can speak like you can, that's a talent, Right? Whatever the case may be, maybe you do hair. You know, if no one can do hair or do eyelashes or do makeup like you can, that's your talent. That's a gift, right? And so that's something that you really want to explore as a way of getting rich. And, and again, uh, going back to my initial um, podcast on this subject, getting rich is way beyond money. Uh, money is a part of it. But, you know, riches can also mean satisfaction. You know, you can make a lot of money and not be satisfied with your work, right? You, you, may, you can make a lot of money and not be satisfied with your life. It's about being rich on multiple levels and in multiple ways. So discover your talent. Discover the thing that you're good at, right? But you can get rich in any business. This is what Waddles talks about, okay? You can get rich in any business. You can get rich in, in business. You can get rich in um you know, entertainment, you can get rich in sports, you can get rich in, uh, you know, working on computers, you can get rich doing anything, right? But you are best suited to get rich in the thing which you have a unique talent for, okay? I am not the greatest dancer in the world, okay? That's not really my gift. That's not my talent. I'm not a great singer, okay? I can carry a tune when nobody's around and nobody's listening, right? But that's not something that I want to do professionally because that's not, my, that's not my gift. That's not my talent, right? I can list off a number of things that are not my talent, but there are things that I think I am good at. I, there are things that I know that I can do, right? But you have to discover what that is for you and then understand that your opportunity to get rich is much more sure doing the thing for which you have a talent for, right? So when you understand what your talents are, you know, if you think that you're very good at writing, okay, then you got to write that down and say, okay, I know that my wealth, like my wealth opportunity is more, more than likely going to come from writing right and it may it may be blogging it may be writing scripts it may be writing books writing novels it may be copywriting it may be um you know helping a business craft their story right on online there's so many different ways that you can write and make money okay but really start honing into what your gift is what you're really good at and then you you know you will become much more successful than trying to beat something that you're really not suited for. Now, I don't want to sound contradictory, but at the same token, you can have a desire to do something and that desire can create the ability to do it, right? So you may, you may not be a great singer, but if you have a desire to become a good singer, you can figure out a way to make it happen. There's a few uh, singers that, you know, just speaking objectively, I don't know if it's singing is like their greatest gift, but because they love it and they have such a strong desire, they were able to get a record deal. They were able to get a, a song on the charts and they were able to make money doing it. So even, even if you don't have a natural talent for it, desire can more than make up for that natural talent. Basically, if you want it bad enough, you can make it happen is the simplest way to put it. Now, if you want to change your business, if you want to change where you are, you know, using my earlier example, let's say you, you know, you're working at a, a job that you're not necessarily crazy about, but you want to change into something that 
you know, you really want to do, the best way to do that is to do it naturally, right? So the way that you do that is, as you're working at the job you're at now, start growing your talent, start cultivating your talent, start improving your talent, right? Improving upon your talent, working it, you know, really growing in your ability to do it. So when you get to a certain level, you know, when you, as you expand your talent, the opportunities come to you versus chasing after an opportunity. I think a lot of people chase after opportunities when their time would be better spent really honing their gift and really improving their talent, their gift, whatever that gift is. If you worked on your gift more so than trying to create an opportunity that doesn't exist, the opportunities start coming to you. And, you know, one day, you know, someone reaches out and says, hey, you know, can you write this blog post for me? Can you, you know, can you be our content strategist? You know, we'll pay you X amount of dollars per year with medical and 401k and the whole nine yards. And, you know, now you have your choice of opportunities. You know, it's all about growing naturally, right? You grow into a new field naturally is what Waddles is saying in this particular chapter. Now, it's your right to do work that you want to do. You have an absolute right to seek after work that you really want to do. You, you are not obligated to do work that you hate. And I think that there's some mixed up messaging around that. I think that a lot of people feel like that they got to stay at a job for 20 years that they hate and you do not have to do that. And more, I would go one step further and say, you should not do that because I think that's what contributes to a lot of sickness, a lot of, uh, a lot of depression, a lot of, you know, people who are, you know, they overeat, they overdrink, um, you know, they damage their body, they damage their mind, you know, drug habits and things like that. If you really t sit down and talk to a lot of these people, they're doing things that they don't like to do, right? I know that a lot of their problems go beyond that, but one of the common threads is they're doing things that they don't want to do, right? A person that's really doing what they want to do and you're happy about your life and you're happy about the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you're less likely to fall into those types of behaviors just because your overall mood is, is heightened. Your overall mood is a lot better than someone who just hates getting up and going to work every day, right? So you're not obligated to do work that you hate. Now, you might say, well, how am I supposed to pay my bills? Well, this is why you want to cultivate your talent and cultivate your gift. The more that you cultivate your talent and your gift, you're going to grow into a situation and, and grow into an opportunity where you will be paid for the level that you're at in your talent. When people hire people, like you don't want to hire a novice, right? You know, if I'm, if I'm paying $1,000 for someone to paint my house, I don't want to hire someone and this is their first house that they're painting, okay? Because guess what's going to likely happen? What's likely going to happen is that they're going to make mistakes. And it's not because they're a bad person or anything like that. It's because it's their first time doing it. And they're, you know, they don't know all the ins and outs of painting a house, right? I want to hire someone that knows what they're doing. I want to hire someone that not only knows how to paint a house, but actually likes painting houses, right? Because I know that they're going to do a good job. And trust me, this is how it is in any field, okay? You want to hire people that know what they're doing. And you want to hire people that like what they're doing. OK, so if that's you, if you're on the service provider side of that, you want to get to a place where you know what you're doing and you want to do things that you like to do, uh, things that you have an affinity for. Now, another thing that Waddles talks about is there's no hurry on the creative plane. You don't want to rush your way through this, right? You want to let it happen organically. You want, you know, just like you can't rush a plant growing, right? You can't rush a plant to grow. That plant's going to grow in its own time and, in, and of its own accord. So you want to grow organically in your talent and in your gift. 
You want to grow organically in your gift. You want to grow organically in whatever it is that you want to do. So if you want to sing, right, you should be writing music every day. You should be singing every day. You should be learning how to hit certain notes. You should be learning how to harmonize. You should be learning how to, you know, stay on beat and, you know, match your songs to whatever music that you're using, right? If you want to be a web designer, right? You should be practicing web design every single day. You should be working on how to do landing pages and funnels and, you know, how to integrate different platforms and, and all of that good stuff, right? If you want to, um, you know, if you want to be in business for yourself, you need to learn how to sell. You, you need to learn how to get customers. You need to learn how to talk to customers. You need to learn how to, you know, uh, market your, your business and, and learn how to f figure out how or what people want to buy. What is it that people want right now? Okay. There are skills in every industry that you have to learn and you have to, you know, basically master and get down cold. So while you're working at Walmart, while you're working at Target, while you're working at a, at a job that maybe you're not crazy about, start working on your, your business, your next step, you know, make your next move, your best move, right? Start working on, okay, how do I perfect my gift while I'm getting a paycheck from this company? And that in that way, you're going to move into an opportunity a lot more organically. And these things are going to start finding you instead of you having to chase them down. Okay. So the last piece I want to talk about here is not hurrying on a creative plane. And we talked a little bit about that already, but I really want to hone in on that because we live in a go-go culture, right? We live in this culture where everything is being rushed, we're being rushed, we're being hurried in every area of our life. We want things faster, we want things more instant and everything else because time is really um, the one thing that we don't get more of in life, right? We, you know, basically the time that you get is the time that you get. And you can't, you know, there's a lot of things that you can buy, but one thing you can't really buy so much is time um, you know, in a simplest way of explaining it. So how do you begin to live a life of less hurry? Well, it comes from you. You've got to decide, okay, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm not going to rush, right? It might be hard at a job because you may have a, um, you may have a supervisor, you may have a manager who's rushing you to get things done because that manager is under pressure. That manager is under pressure to provide reports and provide status and all of this other things, right? You may be under a rush from a customer. A customer might be saying, you know, I need something now. I need this now, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in your life, really begin to not rush, especially when it comes to your own work, okay? Like your supervisor doesn't control your work, your, your work, your talent, that thing that you're building on your own when you get off work every day, right? Don't rush in that. Really work on that talent, work on that gift, perfect it and don't rush, you know, but just continue to grow it, continue to make it better. Right. And you know that this is your business. You know that this is your right business. You know that this is your talent. You know, this is your gift. Right. So you don't have to figure that out anymore. Right. But just continue to just work on that gift, perfect it, get as good as you possibly can with it. And like I said, the opportunity will find you when you when you expand enough, right? You will break into new areas and new fields and people will start contacting you instead of the other way around. I'm not saying that you don't have to prospect, but what I am saying is you can get so good that when you post something on Instagram, you know, people will start coming out of the woodwork and saying, Hey, I want, you know, I want you to write a song for me. I want you to, you know, I want you to fix my computer. I want you to make me a flyer or make me uh, a graphic design piece, whatever the case may be, just work on your gift, whatever it is, make it the best you possibly can. And the opportunities start finding you. And pretty soon you'll have a choice of whether to keep going to that job or just go full time and doing the thing that you love to do or the thing that you're most gifted at doing. So thank you for listening to uh, this podcast. We're down to our last three or four. Uh, this is going to be uh, very exciting. There are next couple of ones. I'm very excited to get into it. Very excited to share it with you. And I can't wait to do so. So 
please like, comment, subscribe to the podcast, and I will talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the Under Construction Podcast on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. For more information on Guided Expressions courses and products, go to guidedexpressions.com forward slash products.